your game is in my house all the time. After months of discussion, a potential solution to stop excess noise from community pickleball courts, what the city of Arlington is proposing. Plus, what changes the district's Office of Unified Communications is making after devastating flooding killed 10 pets at a doggy daycare center in Northeast. Jackie, good morning. Okay, good morning tonight. And Corey, out there later on today, not quite as hot as yesterday. And also, we're going to be seeing lower humidity. How long does this nice weather last? Those details coming up. And also coming up, stretching your dollar this morning. What deals you need to know about to wrap up your back to school shopping? The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good morning. It is six o'clock on the dot now on a Tuesday morning. Taking a live look outside, you can see the Washington Monument out there. Nice start to the day. Well, it's a little bit warm right now, but a cool down is coming. But again, thanks for starting your morning with us here on DC News Now. I'm Tania Wright. Yeah, good morning to you. I'm Corey James. You have more on your roads in just a moment. But first, checking in with meteorologist Jackie Lair. Mm -hmm. The cooler weather is heading our way. Yes. The question is, how long is it going to stick around? I mean, it should be sticking around over the next couple of days, <laughs> at least for today and tomorrow. But then, as we get towards, I know ex exactly. We'll take it though. I mean, Thursday though, we'll be tracking slightly warmer temperatures, a little bit more humid and then also a chance for some showers. So that's the day that we'll need the umbrella today though. Not so much. Let's talk about those temperatures as you're heading out right now. A lot of 70s on this map, currently 77 in DC, Annapolis as well. Currently 79 in Lexington Park at the top of this hour, 70 in Hagerstown, upper 60s, Kaiser, Woodstock and Luray. Quite a few locations running right around five and close to 15 degrees higher than we were yesterday morning around this time. So a little bit warmer out there this morning compared to yesterday. Yesterday, all thanks uh, uh, to uh, this cold front, though, this will continue to slide its way south. Right now, though, still warmer, but later on today, we'll be noticing those temperatures not quite as hot as yesterday. We're also noticing that breeze picking up mainly out of the north behind that cold front. 5 to 15 miles per hour sustained winds at this moment. Later on today, those highs low to mid 80s under a mix of sun and clouds. And tomorrow is looking quite nice as well before we see some rain chances returning Thursday. Oh, more details and the timing of those coming up. But Shanika is here with the all important look at those roads. How's traffic? at the six o'clock hour. All right, well, all is well right now, even with this one situation in Northern Virginia. Here's the outer loop stretch just past or just before 267, and it is looking like they're flashing lights, and you're seeing just two lanes blocked there. So just stay left to get by if you're on the outer loop, and this is in Northern Virginia again. You're getting better, though. Earlier, I saw bold red heading on the outer loop. Now I'm seeing yellow there, so not too bad. Then off of 50, you're still seeing a crash right near Braddock and Loudoun County Parkway, so do be aware of that situation. The rest of your roadways are all looking good and okay. Thank you. Your time right now is 6.02. A quick look at your know-and-go headlines this morning. First up, Ward 8 is getting its first rec center in more than 20 years. Mayor Bowser broke ground on the new project yesterday. People living in the area say they hope it will help curb youth crime by keeping kids off the streets. And Maryland Governor Wes Moore is pushing for funding to revamp the American Legion Bridge. He is asking the federal government to help cover the multi-billion dollar cost. The plan will advance transit options and help manage lanes. And President Biden meeting with survivors and getting a first-hand look at some of the damage from the deadly wildfires in Maui. FEMA officials say Biden's visit to the island will allow him to push for more aid from Congress. All right, well, 911 calls are giving some more insight into what led to 10 dogs drowning inside of the district dogs facility, and this was in Northeast D.C. Yeah, the flash flood happened last Monday. D.C. News Now's Lex Wars is live this morning outside the now closed district dogs. And Lex, we now know the call was classified as a water leak. What else are the dispatch calls revealing? Right, well, they're showing us that this was much more than just a um, misclassification. This was actually a deadly mistake made by that dispatcher here. The very first caller that called into 911 told them that this building here was submerged underwater, but that dispatch call taker, they classified it as simply a water leak. And let's take a listen to how that impacted the response from first responders. The access to those buildings are all completely flooded right now. You're going to have to hold that call for a little while until we get these rescues resolved. Right, and that was the response 
that they got from first responders on the first two calls made about the flash flood here. Both of those calls came from employees who were watching over the facility's webcams in horror. It wasn't until a third person who was inside the district dogs called and said they were trapped in water above their heads that a water rescue was dispatched. That was 16 minutes after that first call. Well, the call center director Heather McGaffin says that there was not a specific dispatch code for people trapped in a flooded building, even though there were notes put into the system. McGaffin said that those notes were not communicated over the radio to firefighters. Strengthening our um, commitment to relaying that information verbally over the radio is something that we will be doing in the future. Well, McGaffin said that the dispatcher who made that water leak call is being addressed. They're calling that a performance issue. But in the meantime, anytime there is flooding with people trapped inside of a building, they're now call going to be classifying that as a building collapse. The call center is also going to be working with Fire Chief Donnelly to make sure that there is better communication between first responders and the call center. McGaffin was very hesitant to call anything a mistake and even up front uh, at the beginning of this up until yesterday, not even really addressing that there were communication issues. So definitely lots of changes that they're going to be having to make at the call center there. Live in Northeast, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. Time right now is 6.05 in Northern Virginia. A child is recovering this morning after being shot in the leg at a home in Manassas. It happened Saturday morning just after 2 o'clock at a home on Winterset Drive. According to investigators, someone shot inside the home. The child is expected to be okay. Police have not made any arrests in the case. And a 12 year old in D.C. has been arrested in connection to an armed carjacking. This happened at around 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon on Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue in U Street in Southeast. Police say the 12 year old demanded keys from the victim at gunpoint. Authorities say the victim refused and the boy took off. According to police, the child was arrested shortly after and charged with armed carjacking. And Ward 8 is getting its first recreational center in over 20 years. Mayor Morial Bowser broke ground on the new project yesterday. Officials say the Anacostia Rec Center will serve the surrounding community and students at the nearby Ketchum Elementary School. And the rec center is estimated to cost about $16 million. It's expected to be finished by the fall of next year. Both D.C. officials and people living nearby say they hope the center can help reduce crime committed by young people in the area. It's something that's needed, and I say it's better late than never. It would just be time consuming. You would have so much time. You'd be so busy in the rec center, you really wouldn't have time to step out into the streets and do other things. We heard that in the last 16 years, we've closed down over 10 recreation centers in a ward that has more children than anywhere else in Washington, D.C. And we set out on a mission to right that wrong. D.C. officials say the rec center will include a gym, fitness room, classrooms, and possibly a playground. Meantime, the president of Howard University addressing safety issues near the dorm known as the Towers. This comes about a week after a fight injured several people there. In an email to parents, the president says kids were yelling, taunting, and displaying threatening behavior near the residence hall in a separate incident this past weekend. No injuries were reported in that incident. D.C. police will begin enforcing a curfew on September 1st for anyone under 17 in response to the recent violence around the city. And former President Donald Trump says he is turning himself in to a Fulton County, Georgia, Georgia courtroom uh, Thursday. This after bond was set at $200,000 in the Georgia case, accusing him of trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Now, Trump was charged last week alongside 18 others in that indictment. Now, this is just one of four criminal cases against a former president as he campaigns to get back into the White House. Meantime, the Justice Department is denying Trump's proposal to move his federal case case to April 2026. Trump's legal team filed to push the trial back, saying they needed more time to look through the 11.5 million pages of potential evidence. Special counsel Jack Smith presented them. The trial date is set for January 2nd next year. And happening today, Ben's Chili Bowl on U Street is celebrating its 65th anniversary. And because of the event, there are some road closures in place. Today, from 9.30 a.m. until 2 p.m., you won't be able to park along U Street, and that's between 12th and 13th Street. 
or along 13th Street between U and V Streets. U Street will be completely closed to traffic between 12th and 13th Street starting 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Also happening today, the Maryland Department of Agriculture and Prince George's County is expanding mosquito spraying. Tonight after 7.30 p.m., trucks will be spraying near Pentland Hills and Presidential Golf Drive in Upper Marlboro, as well as 57th Avenue near Doris Court in Bladensburg. Also, Seneca Drive near Cree Drive in Forest Heights. The spray is approved by the EPA, but is still recommended to avoid outdoor activities while the trucks are spraying. All right, kids across the DMV, they're preparing to head back to school over the next couple weeks. That is right. Shopping for essentials are a top priority for students and teachers. Our consumer reporter Ben Dennis is helping you stretch your dollar on those last minute supplies. Backpacks, pencils, and laptops, so oh my. There's plenty to shop for on lists that teachers are sending home to families. Good news, major retailers continue to offer those discounts, but also tools to make the shopping process easier. It's expected to be a record start to the school year for supply sales, according to the National Retail Federation. Households, on average, to spend nearly $900. It's the uptick in demand for tech largely contributing to that trend. But before we get to the deals, some consumer advice to say consider what your child needs and not always what they want. This will help you save some cash and consider recycling any unused supplies you may have from last year for this year. Now to the retailers for supplies and then tech. Amazon, they categorize products needed per grade level. They've also got a 45-piece bundle set for essentials at $18.79. Walmart also separates supplies by grade level, but check out their 50 cent and under deal, a dollar and less and five bucks and under as well. Target offers competitive deals too, but also they have a school list assist tool. Just input your zip code and your school supply list could be right there. Add items from your cart on that screen. Over to tech, Time says consider back markets an online outlet for, refur for refurbished tech, savings up to 70%. $100 markdowns or more at Best Buy for certain products and over 20% off Amazon Fire, tablets, and Samsung phones. Consider local libraries to access computers and Wi-Fi for necessary online assignments. Also, check community forums and consider asking if someone has extra essentials to help your child start the year right. Ben Dennis, DC News Now.